and welcome to In Good Company. I'm your host, Gabriella Scott. And I'm Nathan Roberts. And today's show is full of interesting tips, tricks, and travel destinations. And let's not forget plenty of interesting people, like Ollie Starr. Ollie is an Oklahoma native and member of the Cherokee Nation. She has lived a life full of adventure and service to others. Ollie was recently inducted into the Oklahoma Women's Hall of Fame for her service. We caught up with Ollie to hear more about her life and what it was like for her growing up in Oklahoma. Since 1983, the Oklahoma Commission on the Status of Women has been recognizing exceptional Oklahoma women who have made significant contributions to the success, welfare, and advancement of women in Oklahoma. Would you please help me welcome the best dressed lady here today, the beautiful Miss Ollie Starr. I'm Ollie Starr, and I live in Claremore, Oklahoma. I was born in 1941, and I guess, as you know, 1941 was the beginning of World War II. That was the year that women began to change their role of life because they began to go out into the workforce. Their husbands went to the army, the military, and they assumed the role of working. So when I was a little girl, I lived at Pryor, Oklahoma, out on a ranch. When I was uh, 16, I graduated from high school because of my starting to school so early, and I thought I knew how it, the whole world was. So I got married, and I had my first baby when I was 17, and by the time I was 25, I had four. They grew up with me, I grew up with them. So we lived at Talala, Oklahoma, which is not very big, so we had to learn how to entertain ourselves and interact with the people, but that was a great experience for my children because they learned the values of family and church and knowing everybody around and having freedom to roam the neighborhood. So we don't see much of that today. My husband was a truck driver. I have to learn to do something different. So I said, you know, we've got to get out of this Talala. This is just too, uh, you know, there's just not enough here. So we, I worked and I worked and we worked. And we saved our money and we got a, new, a house with a swimming pool. But still, all these kids were at my house. All the neighborhood kids. Now, in later years, I learned they all come because they wanted something to eat. You couldn't let them all go hungry. They all say, oh, we remember your food, we remember you. So when we moved, some of them just moved with us and they didn't tell their parents they were moving. So I've always kind of just gathered up people. Then my life changed and brother, I went broke. So I was sitting there one day and saying, oh, gee, what am I going to do? And I said, oh, well, Atlanta's where all the action is. So I took $200, two suitcases, and one-way ticket and went to Atlanta. My children were all grown. And I started acting. I was going to acting school. So I went to acting school, and I got cast in a few little movies. So I went to Hollywood, and I become a star. I got married to Mr. Star and moved from Atlanta to Hollywood, Florida. So now, if you ever want to become a star, just go to Hollywood, get married, and become a star. I had a coalition called Turnaround America, and it was uh, a coalition against drugs and crime and cleaning neighborhoods up, and then I taught people how, in other communities, how to clean their neighborhood. After several years of doing those kinds of things in Florida, I began to teach the military on how to do community interaction. I founded a boys and girls club. I did many, many things. But then it came time for me to move back to Oklahoma. And I have four children here, eight grandchildren. I have six great-grandchildren right now and three more on the way. So it's my place to be here now. So through all of those endeavors and journeys of life and helping elders, that's where I'm at today. 
our forefathers, our ancestors, they taught us. We're always going to have things in our life, but we always have to understand it's up to us to complete the journey that our forefathers took and to keep walking a good path. You're watching In Good Company, presented by Value News. The world is evolving, and so is your business. Don't you think your marketing strategy should too? At Value News, we're ready to help. By utilizing a diverse set of marketing strategies, we can ensure that your small business receives an effective monthly advertising program. From print to social media, we've got you covered. Value News, advertising made easy. So Home of Hope is a nonprofit organization that provides services to over 250 men and women with intellectual and developmental disabilities throughout Northeast Oklahoma. Home of Hope creates residential opportunities, vocational opportunities, quality of life activities. So it's just this wide range of services. If you have questions about whether you or somebody that you are concerned for or a loved one would qualify for the services of Home of Hope, just give us a call. Do you smell that? Mmm, smells good. Chef Shannon must be in the kitchen. Chef Shannon has great recipes. Did you know that she has traveled to more than 50 countries learning new recipes and teaching more people how to cook? She's helped underprivileged communities, schools, and orphanages learn how to create meals from their local ingredients. Wow, that's incredible. Right? And now she's here to share those recipes with us. Let's see what she's cooking up today. Iceberg lettuce has gotten a bad rap in recent years because of its lack of nutrients and flavor. But for what it lacks in flavor, it makes up for in its durability and its crunchiness. I'm Shannon Smith, and I'm gonna show you how to make this into a great, tasty wedge salad. The first thing I wanna do is make some bacon. So I've got some chopped bacon that I'm gonna put into a skillet over a, about a medium-high heat. And this is a smoked bacon that I'm gonna get nice and spread out. And I'm gonna render that until it's nice and crispy to go on the salad. Meanwhile, I'm gonna start the dressing. I've got a bowl and a whisk. And the base of the dressing is gonna be a mayonnaise. And some sour cream. And I always use whole fat mayonnaise and sour cream. I don't like the low fat stuff because it's not nearly as rich. This is some chopped garlic. I want to put a little bit of dry mustard. And the dry mustard is a little bit spicy and just adds some flavor to the dressing. This is some Worcestershire sauce and some white wine vinegar. A little salt and some fresh ground pepper. And use a whisk to get all this combined. Now to this, I'm gonna add some blue cheese. And there are many different types of blue cheese. There's really, really mild and then there's really strong. And everyone has their preference for that. If you don't like blue cheese, you can go with the really mild. And if you don't like it at all, of course you could leave it out. So this is a crumbled blue cheese that I'll put inside the dressing. And then you can put this in the refrigerator and let it chill to go on the salad later. So while the bacon is cooking, I'm gonna make some candied pecans. And the way to do that is to get a skillet and turn it on, it has to be a non-stick skillet, and get it pretty hot to about medium, medium high temperature. I'm gonna take some white sugar and spread it on the bottom, it's about two tablespoons. And I'm gonna watch this really carefully. This is not the time to go answer the phone or run an errand or something. This is a really uh, time sensitive project because we want the sugar to melt and as soon as it starts melting, we're gonna add some, some pecans. Okay, so it's starting to melt some around the edges and this is when you wanna put in your pecans. And get them all in there in, a, in one layer so they're all touching the bottom of the pan 
and in contact with the sugar. And this is where you want to leave it just for a, for a few seconds and then start stirring it really gently because that sugar is dissolving and it's going to coat my pecans. Once you can see that most of the sugar is dissolved and that all the pecans are coated, you don't want to leave it in the pan. If you do that, they're going to start burning. So you're going to take them and just slide them onto a plate and let them cool completely. Right now they're a little, uh, they're a little hot and sticky, so you want to uh, put this aside and let them cool and then you'll break them up to be put on the salad. Our bacon is nice and crisp, so I'm going to put it onto a plate that's lined with a paper towel so we can get a lot of that grease off and also get it cooled down. We want all of our ingredients that go on the salad to be cooled. If it's hot, it's going to uh, do a little bit of wilting, which isn't what we want for this particular salad. So I'll set that aside. And now it's time for my favorite part of making this salad which is to remove the core of the iceberg lettuce. So it has this big heavy core that is not edible and you want to remove it. And the best way to do that is to pound it on the countertop. And this way the core comes out and you have this nice head of lettuce that's still pretty much intact. So I'll take a knife and this is what I'm gonna cut into the wedges. I like to cut it in fourths, which will give you four different salads, but you could cut it in fifth or sixth to make smaller salads if you want. So now I have these beautiful wedges that I'll put on a platter. And set each one of them with the cut side up. Now this is an important step. You need to take some salt and just not too much, but put a little bit so that it falls into all those layers. Because remember, iceberg lettuce doesn't have a lot of flavor, but by adding salt, you've now added some flavor to it. I'm gonna finish assembling the salads. So I've got this chilled blue cheese dressing and I'm just gonna dollop this on top. To be honest, this is the only salad that I like where the dressing is not tossed into the lettuce. So each wedge gets the blue cheese dressing, and then if you want, you can even add more blue cheese to it. Just crumble that on top and it will kind of fall into those layers. And if some gets on the side, that's okay too. And I've got the bacon. Sprinkle that on top. And these are little cherry tomatoes that I halved. And those can go in there. It adds a little bit of sweetness and of course the color looks really nice. Oops, one jumped. We got two jumpers there. And if you want, you can add some red onion. Again, we're adding some color and a little spice. If you don't like onion, you can leave that off, but I love red onions. And lastly, are the sugared pecans. These are nice and cool. And they're crispy. And sprinkle these on top. If you want, you can put some freshly ground pepper. This salad makes a great weeknight dinner salad. It's also beautiful on a buffet table. See you next time. You're watching In Good Company. We'll be right back. Are you ready to break up with your old driveway? Maybe add some new curb appeal, increase your driveway functionality, 
LCI Concrete has answers to all these questions and more. Since 2005, they've been building driveways for homes and businesses in the Tulsa metropolitan area. And LCI supports many charities throughout northeastern Oklahoma and the world. When you think driveways, think LCI. Claremore, Oklahoma's Main Street on Will Rogers Boulevard is home to many locally owned small businesses like District Baby. Owner Carrie Bohannon is actively involved in supporting local school programs and Rogers County SafeNet intervention services. Shopping at District Baby for your baby and toddler clothing, shoes, accessories, toys and gifts helps impact lives that need it most. Health has been a major concern for all of us over the last few months. And with growing health concerns, more Oklahomans have been looking for ways to stay healthy in their daily lives. Dr. Melita Tate offers great health tips for people trying to get back their health. We visited Grassroots Healthcare in Tulsa to find out how you can improve your health one step at a time. Hi, I'm Dr. Melita Tate with Grassroots Healthcare, and we're here today to talk about a subject that is very dear to most Americans, and that is sugar consumption, and namely uh, a sugar-free detox or a way to uh, come off of sugar where it's not so much in control of our lives. The reason why sugar has become such a big part of our lives is that it has many properties that are similar to a drug. By that I mean sugar does things that we would expect from addictive substance. It is released into the bloodstream in a quick, very quick fashion, higher than you could get from any natural substance. It also directly acts on the neurotransmitters in the brain to give you an immediate sensation of pleasure. So one of the ways that I've been able to talk to my patients and find out or help us to understand that we do have this addictive relationship with sugar is to go through the cage questions. And if you don't know what those are, they are used to identify alcohol or other similar drug addictions. And they are the following, and I'd like you to ask yourself these about sugar. Have you ever tried to cut back and been unsuccessful? Have you ever felt annoyed when someone suggested you decrease your consumption? Have you ever felt guilty about the amount that you consume? Also, have you ever felt physical symptoms in the morning, like you needed an eye opener, either shakiness or jitteriness or a uh, sick feeling because you hadn't eaten. So those questions kind of really bring to light the fact that we aren't really free to choose whether or not we want to have sugar or not. One of the things my patients bring up frequently when we start talking about these kind of issues is that they want the freedom to choose the foods that they want to eat. And when asked if they had a plate of cookies or um, a big nice doughy pizza in front of them to refuse it, a lot of times my patients say that they can't and that is one of the properties of sugar and it's, it's engineered that way on purpose. So if you'll think back with me to the 1980s when we all went low fat to decrease cardiovascular disease, obesity, and diabetes, you'll recall that uh, we, we didn't really address the sugar issue. There were some studies done at the time that had suggested that fat was the problem, but there were other studies being done that showed that it was actually sugar. And if you look back today, you can see that the studies that showed fat was the problem were funded by the sugar companies, and also those studies were flawed. Thirty years later, we've based all of our science and all of our recommendations as physicians to patients, as parents to our children, on those earlier studies, and we have more cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and obesity than ever before. And what we're finding is that sugar is the problem not the fats. A lot of my patients have seen major improvements when they have been able to cut sugar and carbohydrates that are not natural, mostly the processed kinds of sugar, out of their diets. Once our patients have completed the three-week sugar-free detox, they have much more control of their sugar cravings and are able to see a plate of cookies or a pizza and, and walk by it. And I know it's hard to believe, but it's, it's really amazing some of the other great benefits they've seen. We've had patients lose a great number of pounds just in those three weeks. A lot of times it's related to inflammation that's been in their body, so they release a lot of inflammation and a lot of 
uh, water weight that they've been retaining. We've seen patients have their numbers for diabetes go down into the pre-diabetic or even lower ranges. We've seen patients uh, be able to come off blood pressure medications uh, just by losing five to 10 pounds. That's what we want to see. We, we want to see our patients regain and get back their health. And so much like a smoker, their taste buds come back. The same thing happens when we get sugar out of our diet. Natural sugars begin to taste sweet again and, and the flavors and things are more appreciated. So that's what we want for our patients. If any of our patients are experiencing symptoms of inflammation in their joints or not being able to lose weight even when they cut back on their calories, we recommend, strongly recommend a sugar detox. Grassroots Healthcare is committed to giving Oklahomans back their health so they can do things like, I don't know, take a day trip in Enid? Enid? What's going on in Enid? There's plenty to do in this historic town in Northwest Oklahoma. From museums and parks to local restaurants, there's something for everyone in Enid, Oklahoma. Welcome to the Cherokee Strip Regional Heritage Center. My name is Jake Crumweedy and I'm the Executive Director. And I want to show you around this wonderful piece of Oklahoma history. The Cherokee Strip Regional Heritage Center is a uh, museum that focuses on Oklahoma and really the whole theme throughout is a story of survival. When people first came out to this area, they were trying to figure out how to just survive on what is known as the Great American Desert, the Great Plains. So why the name the Cherokee Strip Regional Heritage Center? Why not just the Cherokee Strip Museum? Well, we are more than just a museum. We have a archive and research center in the basement of the Heritage Center. You know, people can come and do research their family genealogy, research different works that they might be working on academically, things like that. And don't forget to visit the Humphrey Heritage Village on our grounds. When you step outside, you're stepping back in time to see what life was like in Northwestern Oklahoma before statehood. When you visit Enid, be sure to stop by the Cherokee Strip Regional Heritage Center. After you visit the Cherokee Strip Regional Heritage Center, why not stop by the Railroad Museum of Oklahoma, where you'll find the largest collection of railroad memorabilia around, complete with dining car china, punch tickets, a functioning telegraph system, a train yard that holds some of the oldest locomotives in Oklahoma, and so much more. If it has to do with the railroad, owner Watermelon Campbell's got it and would be happy to tell you all about it. Ready to do some shopping? Maybe grab a bite to eat? Catch a show at the Stride Bank Center? Maybe even snap a picture in front of the famous Shark Bridge? Then head downtown where you'll find it all. But don't forget to top off your trip to Enid at Enid Brewing Company. Hey, this is Justin at Enid Brewing Company on the corner of Maine and Independence in downtown Enid, Oklahoma. We are actually Oklahoma's first grain to glass brewery in Oklahoma. Uh, what that means is we actually harvest our own barley and wheat. We get it malted and then we make it into beer here in Enid, Oklahoma. So at, at Enid Brewing Company, um, I'm the farmer, Justin's the brewer. And that's really what makes us unique at, at Enid Brewing Company is that we utilize local grains, locally grown wheat, locally grown two-row barley um, in, in all of our beers. We have a constant rotating menu of beers. We have about four different core beers and the rest of them rotate in and out. We have 14 different tap handles, so that gives you an idea about 10 different ones rotate through. So here at Enid Brewing Company, another thing that makes us special is we've, we've added food. So we've got a, you know, a full um, menu. There's something for everyone at Enid Brewing Company. You know, we talk about being the third place, right? You've got home, you've got work, and then you've got Enid Brewing Company. So it's a place where family and friends can come together with their kids as well. Um, we have a lot of different events. We have live music, we have trivia, uh, and various things where not only do we have a good product for people to enjoy, but it's a fun environment. And we have a real thriving downtown community right now. We have shops on every corner, I think at this point, um, all around the square, local restaurants, uh, both breweries are downtown here. So I, I'd say the biggest reason to visit Enid is for the downtown. That's where you're gonna find the most fun uh, stuff going on. 
think I know where my next day trip is going to be. I better get packing. Thank you for watching In Good Company. See you next time. Join us next week on In Good Company. If you would like for your small business to be featured on In Good Company, visit our website at valuenews.com and click on the Contact Us button. Or give us a call at 918-828-9600 to request a spot on the show.